Hello Year 10 and welcome to another episode of Remote Learning. Let's begin with some starter questions. These cover the subject of work done. So number one, what is work done? Give the definition and the formula. Number two, what is the unit of work done? What do we measure it in? Hint, it's very similar to something we've done before. Number three, state the two factors which affect the amount of work done. And if you check the equation you've written for question one, you should find them. And finally, if the total amount of work done to an object is constant, how are the other two factors linked? Are they directly proportional? Are they inversely proportional? Or is there no connection? Once you've answered these, please continue and we'll look at the answer. So for number one, work done, of course, is the energy transferred when a force moves an object. And the equation W equals F times S. Work done is measured in joules as it's an energy transfer. And the two factors which affect it are, of course, the force and the distance moved in the direction of that force. If worked on is constant, then the other two are inversely proportional. So today we're going to look at gravitational potential energy so that we can recall which factors affect it. We'll look at the equation and we'll calculate it and we will also rearrange and apply the equation. So recapping from previously, is work done in these examples. So when we carry a book from one shelf to another, is there work done? Um, when we lift some books onto a higher shelf, is there work done? Well, no. No work is done to move it to the same height because there's no change in energy. But work is done to lift it to a higher shelf. And in terms of the energy gained by the object transferred to it, that is a gain of the gravitational potential stored. So by lifting an object, work is done. There is a force equal to the weight of the object and a distance equal to the height. So there is a gain of gravitational potential energy. When an object falls, its potential energy decreases. The change is usually to kinetic energy, and then at the bottom to thermal, to a sound pathway, and other forms of energy. As a definition, gravitational potential energy is that which an object has because of its position, and the higher up the object is, the more energy it has. Expressing uh, gravitational potential energy in an equation, we find that it depends on three things. It depends on how heavy the object is, so its mass in kilograms. It depends on which planet you're on, how strong is that pull of gravity. This is known as the gravitational field strength. And it depends on how high the object moves up or down. So three factors all to consider. This formula needs to be learned for your GCSE exam and you need to remember the unit, this correct symbol, so we'll be careful with uppercase and lowercase. Note that the P for potential energy is a subscript. It is not a regular letter. It's just a little one in the corner. So um, comparing work done to gravitational potential energy we can see that work is a force times distance. In potential energy, mass times gravity, if you recall from year nine, is equal to weight. So the weight is the force. And if we look at the distance, well, that's equivalent to the height. So the two equations are actually comparable.
On the next slide, you're going to see a series of questions to practice calculating gravitational potential energy. Watch out for formula and units. I would recommend that you show all you're working. And do you indeed know what planet you are on? I say this quite literally because the planet in each question will affect the value of g. Now on the Earth, g has a value of about 10 newtons per kilogram. More precisely quoted in some textbooks and at A level uh, to either 9.8 or 9.81. But at GCSE level, you will always be given a value for g. OK, so let's have a go then. Remember that on Mercury, it's 3.7 newtons per kilogram, 10 on the Earth, 20 on Saturn and 14 on Neptune because it's the most massive of the four planets in this example. Once you've had a go at these and you're satisfied with your answers, proceed to the next page and you can check them against the ones shown on the next slide. Again, pause, mark your work and move along. After this, we're going to attempt two short apply to demonstrate tasks. The first involves a high jumper. So read, pause and complete. Then self mark against the next slide if you're working at home. If you're completing this on a forms quiz, you will need to enter an electronic answer instead. So again, for those in your in 10S, please complete this in forms, referring to the video for any assistance. Thank you.